upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the answer. Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, number 176. Gospel hymns and songs, number 176. It may be at morn when the day is awakening, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. It may be at midday, it may be at twilight, it may be by chance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. While his host cry, O Simon, from heaven descending, we glorify saints and the angels attending with grace on his brow like a halo of glory with Jesus, when, with Jesus receive his own. O joy, O delight, should we go without dying, no sickness, no sadness, no dread, and no crying, cut up through the clouds with our Lord into glory when Jesus receives his own. O Lord Jesus, how long, how long, I will shout the glad song, Christ returning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because of this morning. Thank you because of joy of coming to your presence. We ask and pray this morning that the entrance of your work this morning we give light unto our soul. We get us ready, prepared for this glorious day. Bless us through your word now. In Jesus' name, I pray. You are welcome this morning to a search the scripture class. This morning we are moving to a set the scripture titled The Rapture. Can we say it together? We have a memory verse in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Do we get a volunteer to recite a memory verse for us in the class? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Yes, my sister there. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord and meet the Lord in the hair, so, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Thank you so much. Can we all recite it together as a class? One, two, go. And the Lord will make it to happen in our lives in Jesus' name. We want a fast reader to please help us to read. First Corinthians can first fast reader, any volunteer. Thank you, our brother. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 51 to 55. From verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thank you. First Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13 to 18. Verse 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, but we sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also we sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. When which, then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you, my brother. The rapture is the greatest event of all ages that the church is waiting for. It is the catching away of all true believers in Christ to meet the Lord in the air. It will also be heralded by Christ's appearance in the air at the trump of God. That means Christ will not be visible to the inhabitants of the earth when it comes at rapture. This is called the first phase of the Lord's second coming. Christ's mission at the rapture will be to resurrect all dead saints who along with the living believers 
we put on immortality and shall be caught up to be with the Lord. The rapture will take place in the twinkling of an eye before the great tribulation. You see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I said, we shall be changed. So we see that the Lord has prepared this for us, and we must be ready. The time of the rapture is unknown. Look at it in Matthew Gospel, chapter 24, in verse 36. But of the day, an hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. That's what the scripture says, and that's what we believe. Question number one, what do you understand? by the term rapture what do you understand by the term rapture any volunteer yes a brother do. rapture is the catching away of the saints to meet with the lord in the air thank you very much today's topic will be considered under three subheadings number one we look at the certainty of the rapture. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. In the life of Enoch and Elijah, the two old living saints, Old Testament living saints, who did not taste death, but were translated. Number two, they were translated in a moment of time. They were caught up in the air. And we see this in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. That's the rapture there. God took him. Also, the life of Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 2, in verse 11 to 12. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wide wind unto heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. We saw Christ in the New Testament. He also exemplified these. He died, he was buried, he resurrected. You see that in Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And when he had spoken these things, why they beheld, he was taken up. That's the rapture. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And why they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken all from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The rapture was a mystery to the Old Testament prophets and saints, and it will mark the end of this special period of grace called the church age. God will then resume his program with Israel immediately after the rapture. This ushering us, you know, to the beginning of the 70th week in Daniel prophecy. You see that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make reconciliation and to seal up the vision 
and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. It is very certain that Christ is coming back again because he assured the church of the certainty of his coming. As we have read in John chapter 14 from verses 1 to 3, angels proclaimed it, apostles and saints throughout the ages preached it. In fact, all the signs of his coming are daily being fulfilled. Question, cite scriptural proofs of the certainty of the rapture. Anyone from this side? Cite scriptural proofs of the certainty of the rapture. Any volunteer on this side? Scriptural proofs. Thank you, my brother. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 24, cites about Elijah. He was taken. And Genesis chapter 5, verse 12, verse 24, talks about Enoch. Who was taken by God. Thank you very much. That leads us to point number two. Signs, heralding, and suddenness of the rapture of saints. Our Lord Jesus did not leave us in the dark concerning his coming as records abound in Matthew, Mark, and Luke and other books of the Bible. Here are some of the signs Christ revealed in answering a pertinent question asked by his disciples. In Matthew chapter 14, in verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So number one, you see many false Christ, we arise to deceive unsuspected Christian. Number two, in verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So number two, you see wars and rumors of war. Number three, you see international wars. That is in the verse 7. For nations shall write against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there's, you see there, number four, famine, verse 7b, he said, and there shall be famines. That is global economic recession. And then number five, you see pestilences in, the, in verse 7 as well. And you see uh, earthquake in diverse places. And number seven, persecution of Christ's followers and some cases of martyrdom. Number eight, you see the emergence of many false prophets in verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, backsliding from the feet on the increase. And number 10, more people given to pleasure and merry making than those seeking the law. You see that in verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. Question number three, how do we know the coming of the Lord is at hand? How do we know the coming of the Lord is at hand? Any volunteer? I want to help us. Okay, someone from the, yes, our sister. I've already been shown. I've been fulfilled. Thank you very much. We'll see here that all the signs the Lord has spoken about are almost, you know, accomplished. They have almost been fulfilled. There will also be a system of deniers within the physical church just before Christ's return. Number one, there's going to be a denier of God. Many will say they don't, there is no God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, this know also that in the last day, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, eddy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And from such, do what? Turn away. So you see the denial of God. Number two, there's going to be denial of Christ. You see that in First John chapter 2, verse 18. He said, little children, 
it is the last time and as ye have heard that the antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time there's also going to be denial of christ's return you say where well, christ is not coming back again you see that in second peter chapter 3 and 4 knowing this force that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own you know lost and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation and then that's going to be a denial of the faith of Christian living you know Christian living and a denial of authority in uh, you see that in Jude verse 18 how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should work after their own ungodly laws so we see all of this and you see paul the apostle through his writing he shows us the uncertainty and the unpredictability the imminence and the suddenness of the time of christ coming he likened it to two you know a two kind of a analogy it talks about a thief in the night that will come at a time you are not expecting. It also talks about a woman in tra travail. That is how the coming of the Lord will be. And so that should make us to be ready. And the Lord will make us to be ready in Jesus' name. Question number four. What does the Bible say concerning the time of the Lord's return? And what can believers learn from it what does the bible say concerning the time of the lost return and what can believers learn from it any volunteer from the chorister here the bible said that the time is unknown and believers should be fully prepared for the rapture thank you very much you see that in first thessalonians chapter 5 in verse uh, 1 to 3 but of the times and the season brethren ye have no need that I write unto you for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when this I say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not uh, escape that takes us to point number three saint readiness for the rapture if there is anything that should be of greater importance to true believers today it is the knowledge of the kind of character the life and the conduct that we make and keep him ready for the rapture to be ready for the coming of the lord the duty of watching is of paramount obligation for all men and for all time in mark gospel chapter 13 verse 37 he said what i say unto you i say unto all and what is that watch the lord will help us to watch number two in revelation chapter 16 verse 15 he said blessed is he that watcheth in first peter chapter 4 in verse 7 he said be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 watch ye stand fast in the faith be strong apart from watching watching our word watching our action watching our taste watching our character watching our habit we also need to wait for the law as we are not waiting in idleness we must toil and labor for the master now why we have the opportunity and the time we need to labor for him you see that in luke gospel chapter 19 in verse 13 it says occupy tea i come we need to occupy for the law and number three there must be soberness soberness must also characterize our lives as christian that is waiting for the coming of the lord jesus christ in first peter chapter 4 in verse 7 he said but the hand of 14 is at hand be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer know that the lord will not catch away fake christians loud and half-hearted christian 
Christ will not catch away cold and feel the Christian, fearful church goers. No, not at all. Only true saints, surrendered, serving, and sincere saints will be caught away. In summary, to qualify and to partake in the rapture, what do we need to do? There must be salvation current experience of salvation not the yes the years so old current one number two there must be a life of transparent holiness within and without there must be daily work in the light there must be faithful service for god daily watching praying always with all prayers backsliders careless and compromising preachers will not be able to go at the rapture all sinners in and outside the church will be left behind to face the great tribulation if they fail to repent sinners must therefore make haste to repent and embrace christ as their savior as and saints must watch and pray my prayer is that we not hear all of these in vain but we will be partaker we will be ready for the very coming of the lord jesus christ so we close our eyes and pray to the lord and say lord i've heard about your word, the rapture the catching away of the true sin are you a saint have you given your life to christ have you repented of your sin are you still living in any sin this is the time to repent this is the time to prepare this is the time to be ready for the coming of the lord and as you pray to the lord and say lord i don't want to be left behind when the rule will be called up yonder i don't want to be left behind pray and ask for the grace of god that you will be ready in case his coming come just after the service today you'll be able to go with the lord heavenly father we bless your name for this morning thank you because of the exposition of your word i pray that lord you will make us ready your word that we have had this morning will keep us in perpetual readiness for your coming in jesus name and while we are waiting we are not waiting in high doness we are occupying for the master we are laboring for the master i pray that lord as we labor as we serve as we watch as we pray whenever the trumpet will sound lord will be ready to go with you in jesus name thank you because you know you've answered for in jesus mighty name I pray. Praise the Lord. This morning we have learned about the rapture if you have any question on what we've learned will you please stand up and come to the front of the hall if you have any question on what we've learned we are moving to the front could you please do that faster let me take that sister's uh, question good morning sir uh, we have learned about rapture and uh, I understood that we need to prepare. But my question is, what is the order of this event, the rapture and the great tribulation? Because there are some group of believers that believe that all Christians must face the great tribulation. And in, in 1 John 2 verse 18, First John 2 verse 13 says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. In Revelation 7 verse 9 to 17, it also talks about the multitude that came from the uh, Great Tribulation. In Revelation 13 verse 16 to 18, it talks about the mark of the beast. So, I want to know the order of this event. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you very much. The, the rapture is different from the great tribulation. The great tribulation is for sinners and every other person that missed the rapture. The rapture does not take place. Sorry, the great tribulation does not take place until after the saints of God have been taken away from this world through the rapture. Because God has not appointed us, the believers, unto the wrath of the rapture. So, since you are a member of this church, you limit yourself to the scriptural exposition we have in the church. You get confused when you listen to the church as God has given us expository teachings here. And then you go to YouTube, listen to another person. You go to the TV, listen to another person. You go to the bookshop, you buy other books, you read other people's opinion. All these external unnecessary knowledges rise up within you to create a confusion to the revelation you have from the word of God in the church. The brother there. Good morning, sir. So this morning we studied about the rapture. And my question is this. As we are now coming this morning, one of the brothers made a statement. He said, if as a believer, you are supposed to be in a place of the people of God, and it happens that that very day the trumpet sound you are not there you are somewhere else that there's a possibility you are going to miss the rapture then that word was ringing in my mind i want to know sir if it happens that i was supposed to be in the fellowship or in a place of the people of god and then i happen to be somewhere else does it mean as a believer I will not hear the sound of the rapture and does he also mean that i'm not going to make it Thank and you. as a new creature as a new believer in the lord what should be the fate of that believer thank you very much because of time um if you are born again and you are not let's say on a sunday service as we are here the trumpet sounds which is not impossible and we are raptured and there's a brother in your district who is not here the question is will he miss the rapture the answer is yes and no it depends on where is he and what is he doing there he's supposed to be in the church he has gone to attend a birthday party somewhere he's supposed to be in the church he has gone to a place of sin of course but he's a believer he's not in the church because he's on duty you cannot say he will miss the rapture. He's a child of God. He's not in the fellowship because there was an emergency he needed to attend to, maybe as a professional. You cannot say he will miss the rapture. So it depends on where he is, why he is there, and what he is doing there. When the, rapture, when the trumpet sounds and we are raptured, the rapture peaks is like a big magnet that is released it picks all the magnet picks all the metals around it so when jesus appears in the sky all holy saints 
all over the world anywhere they are they disappear from that place thank you very much my brother now in mark chapter 13 mark chapter 13 i'm going to read from verse 32 but of that day and that hour knoweth no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the, the son but the father and the father only that tells us the day of the week is not known the moment of the day of the week is not known now in second peter second peter i'm going to read chapter three second peter chapter three i'm going to read from verse three knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming and look at this said, for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation they became scoffers and we as waiting believers i want to appeal to myself and to everybody let us avoid the lifestyle of the scoffers look at in that verse 4 saying where is the promise of his coming avoid the language of the scoffer where is the language where is the, where is the evidence of his coming? say he will come in fact if you listen to some of, of the messages 20 years ago the way the messages were presented it was as if he will come before the end of that message 20 years has gone nothing has happened let me relax that is the spirit of this coffer you can be in the church you can be born again you can be committed but never you at any time because we read in the scripture if you look at the way apostle paul made presentation about the rapture look at the way peter spoke about the rapture look at the way the scriptures even the way jesus spoke about it if you look at it there are some strong words strong terms that we are used in fact the apostles they spoke as if it will happen in their time thousands of years have gone please brethren don't let any of us relapse into the lifestyle of this cover it has not happened in fact since i was in children's church the way they have been telling us i thought it would happen before i finished primary primary six now i am i have finished my youth service it has not happened i will marry i will have a, i will become a grandfather it will not happen that is the language of this cover may we not enter into this cover's language it says saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation avoid loitering like the scoffer now luke chapter 21 luke chapter 21 i'm going to read from verse 34 it says take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with soviting drunkenness and cares of this life this coffers life the coffers lifestyle the scoffers language the loitering of the scoffer and so that day come upon you 
unawares. It will not be your portion in Jesus' name. The rapture is a time when we are taken away. Taken away. It happened to Enoch. Let's see what Jesus said about it in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one. The one shall be taken and the other left. 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. A time to take away. Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. Verse 24, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not. He was not. And then there's a semicolon. He was not. Very, very, very instructive. He was not. Maybe Petrat Enoch, he left the sitting room while discussing with the family members. He went to the, to the orchard at the backyard. Then all of a sudden, what happened happened and he was taken away by God. He was not. They looked for him at the orchard. He was not there. They looked for him in his private study room. He was not there. They looked every, they went to the next compound, to the next street, to the whole community. Enoch was not. Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5 by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found he was not found because God has translated him I pray for myself and for you when this great event happened you will no more be found here they will look for you in your private study. Maybe, maybe daddy is on his knees praying in his normal room. They will come there. You will not be there again. He was not. He was not found. Because God has translated him. Second Kings. Second Kings. Chapter 2. Second Kings. Chapter 2. In verse 11 verse 11 and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by the wild wind into where? into heaven verse 12 and Elisha saw it and he cried my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him how? No more. He saw him no more. As we are going home today, the trumpets may sound. If you are a wife and you are in the church, but you are not born again, and daddy, your husband, is born again, and is driving on the third mainland bridge, and the trumpet sound. And he's no more there. What happens to that car? And those who are left behind in that car. Those of us who travel regularly by air. You are in the plane. And the pilot is a child of God. And all of a sudden. This great event takes place. And the, the, the pilot is no more. He cannot be found again. And you that knows about this rapture. You are not ready. You are not prepared. And you are still there. Oh, may it not be your portion. What happens to that plane and those the pilot have left behind in that plane? He was not. The sons of the prophet, they told Elisha, let's look for him. Let's look for him. Maybe we'll find him somewhere. Verse 17. And when 
they urged him till he was ashamed he said send go and look for him you want to look for him they sent therefore 50 men and they sought three days and look at that phrase but found him not oh i pray you will no more be found on that day by the time the trumpet sounds and the rapture has taken place and the believers have gone when they look for you maybe you are discussing with your family members maybe you are eating and just you, you had a little cough on the dining table you say you excuse yourself let me just go to the, uh, to, the to the restroom and cough this thing out and and, 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 and brush I wash my face and then the trumpet sound where is daddy he's not found in the toilet he's not found anywhere I pray on that dining table you yourself wife and children you will no more be found is that your amen when the choristers are singing this morning if they come to sing or to play and the trumpet sounds and then we that are ready we are gone I pray nobody will remain singing on this altar Enoch was translated he was not found again Elijah was translated he was not found again we shall be translated our neighbors will not find us again our friends who are not ready will not find us again we came on Tuesday and by the by, by the help of the Lord the GS gave us a masterpiece on the rapture if 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 you are not here on Tuesday go and listen to that message on the YouTube if you are even if you're not a Tuesday leader go and look for that message and go and listen to it very well it's a masterpiece and now something he said that really caught me on praying days even till today he said you are a leader you are a minister people respect you and they give you honor daddy daddy my daddy in the lord my daddy in the lord and you are committed as a pastor committed as a leader as a worker as an usher anything and people love you so much they can speak well about you. that brother we know him we know him. he said apart from every good thing that brethren are talking about you you yourself deep inside your heart what is your conviction about your readiness are you sure that you know that you know that you know if the trumpet sound now apart from what people say about me they love me because i care for them i preach to them i prayed for them and they, god is using me to bless them and they love me they can they speak well about me they can even plug their eyes and dash me apart from public opinion what is your own private opinion about yourself what is the holy ghost telling you deep in your heart is there any restitution to make that the holy ghost is telling you son you have not settled this one what is that thing that you have not settled look at elijah he told elisha ask what you want before the lord will take me away from you he was very sure very very sure and job in job chapter 19 verses 25 to 27 job was sure he said whatever i am going through i know i shall see him whom i shall see i will see him i will see him because i know yes i may have challenges but i will see him i am waiting for the time that i will see him do you have that assurance in your hearts paul the apostle in second timothy chapter chapter 4 verses 6 to 8 he said i have i have fought the good father i have finished my course there is now laid for me a crown there's a crown he, said, I, he was very sure and on that tuesday he, made, he, he asked us that question apart from what other people are saying about you what what is the spirit inside you the holy spirit of god saying about you yourself that when we talk about rapture you are saying oh god i, I know i'm not ready like this brethren don't understand what is going on inside me they don't know the pollution inside me i know i'm not ready they respect me i preach to them but i am not ready may you be ready i said may you be ready brethren knowledge is good experience is best what is your experience with the lord are you ready the trumpet sounds we are going to pray and as we are going to pray please i plead with you really pray 
and get ready. You can stand up. You can sit down. If you want to kneel down, you can kneel down. But we want to really pray. Let's close our eyes. We want to really pray. We want to really pray. What is the Spirit of God telling you about yourself, inside yourself? What is the Holy Ghost telling you about yourself? Are you ready? As a minister, as a pastor in the district, are, are you ready? As a worker in the church, a minister through music, are you ready? How ready are we? How ready are you, my brother? Please pray. Why not pray? Tell the Lord, Lord, if I am in the air, in the aeroplane, and the pilot disappears, I don't want to be among the first casualty after rapture. If I'm on Third Mainland Bridge, and mommy is driving, and mommy disappears, I don't want to be among the first accident casualty that will plunge into the river. Lord, help me to be ready. Help me to be ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. When the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise and we that are alive, we are cut off like Enoch was cut off. We are cut off like Elijah was cut off and we shall be with the Lord. And then the great tribulation will begin to happen in this world. Will you be here at that time to face the great tribu the, the tribulation time? Will you be here at that time to face the wrath of God? Will you be here at that time? Seven years of great tribulation, of tribulation. Will you be here? Will you be here at that time with all the knowledge you have? Will you be here at that time with all the, the ability you have? Will you be here at that time with all the administration you have ministered to other people? Oh Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Let somebody pray. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Any carelessness in my life, any form of loitering, any scoffers lifestyle, a scoffer in the church. I am not a scoffer. All this, that's how they used to shout on the pulpit. That's how they used to shout. They've been shouting since I joined this church 20 years ago. Right now, has not happened. You are a scoffer already. Cleanse yourself from the spirit, the language, the loitering, and the lifestyle of the scoffer and get ready. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father. We pray for myself and for everybody. Please, Lord, make us ready. That when the trumpet sound, we shall no more be found in this world. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.
In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you this morning because we know, Lord, that in your presence is the fullness of joy. And your joy will not depart from our lives in Jesus' name. We have come before you this morning, O Lord. We pray your power will come down upon every participant. At the time we'll be going back home, O Lord, we go back home with the fullness of your grace, with the fullness of your power, with the fullness of your presence, with the fullness of your anointing upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the answer. Jesus' name we pray. We remain standing as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs. Number 176. Gospel hymns and songs. Number 176. It may be at morn when the day is awakening. When sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. It may be at midday, it may be at twilight, it may be by chance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. While his host cry, O Simon, from heaven descending, with glorified saints and the angels attending, with grace on his brow, like a halo of glory, will Jesus receive his own. O joy, O delight, should we go without dying, no sickness, no sadness, no dread, and no crying, caught up through the clouds with our Lord into glory when Jesus receives his own. O oh Lord Jesus, how long, how long I will shout the glass song, Christ returning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> 